welcome back everyone to the 13th episode of the Tundra Cast. We got Rossi and Quarrel with us once more. And yeah. we got breaking news. According to Nate Schmidt, uh, he gave Brandon Sutter a McFlurry. So um, that's that's pretty cool. It, it and was it was Oreo, Oreo flavored. Was it Oreo flavored? I wonder I wonder what size it was. I think it was a medium. Oh. Damn. Couldn't man. even get the couldn't even get the man's as large. Well, I mean he's he's pretty fat anyway, so he doesn't need the extra calories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Okay, no. Okay, All okay, right. okay. But on on to the real thing. Uh, this whole Pierre Luc Dubois uh, situation. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, we should just talk about the trade first. So I thought uh, we'd talk about McFlurries. No, no. <laughs> we'll talk about McFlurries after. But All right, fine. um. If you somehow didn't hear the news, uh, Pierre-Luc Dupont has finally been traded along with a third-round pick in 2022 in exchange for Jack Frostovic and Patrick Laine. Um And I think, I mean, I wouldn't want to say I told you so, but I, I told you so um, that th- this this was a perfect trade for both teams. Jack Frostovic obviously re- requested a trade. He goes home to Columbus. Patrick Laine. His name has been in the rumors for like what three years. He finally gets traded to a team where where, where he would be on the first line. Uh, PLD. We honestly we don't know why he requested a trade. Some people say it's a market thing. Some people say it's torts, which we'll touch on a bit later. But uh, yeah, for me, I I, I think for right now, Winnipeg wins this trade in the short ter- in the short term. But if why not sign an extension? I think Columbus wins because I love Jack Rossovic. And I really think that Patrick Laine, since he's, he's, he's since he's gonna get the ice time, he'll produce. But it really depends on if he fits into Tortorella's defensive system because Laine's not a defensive player whatsoever. I, I just like how how much this this trade ruined our past over underrated videos. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> someone's gonna, someone's gonna watch the Century one. We're gonna be talking about how overrated Laine is, and they're just gonna be like, "Wait, he's on Columbus." Yeah, like. <laughs> Who who did you have for your underrated and overrated Winnipeg again? I had Line overrated, and I think underrated was um Neil Pionk. Oh yeah, I had Pionk too. I don't but, think uh, I had Pionk because I was the odd man out. Oh yeah, I but, don't. Uh, I don't remember. But yeah, I think it works out for both teams. Uh, what's your thoughts, Quarrel? Well, at first I thought uh, Winnipeg ran away with this in a landslide. Or sorry, no. God damn it. Columbus run away with this in a landslide, yeah. but I started to think about it, and it's like it's kind of it's more risky for Columbus because it all depends on if Line can get back into form, right? And he started off the season pretty well, um, and obviously they got Roslovic as well, um, and it's his hometown team, so there's some kind of motivation there too. Uh, so like like you said, Shay, in the short term, definitely the way. PLD's been playing. I think Winnipeg helps out their center core a lot. Um, it matches or is close to a lot of the top center cores in the league, where two of which are in the Canadian division. Um, but uh, in the future, if Line A can get back to form, scoring 40 goals, 50 goals a season, I don't know. It could definitely swing into Columbus's favor, especially if Rossovic fans out. I th- I I mean I would kind of agree, but I'll say it was even riskier for Columbus because of Roslovic too. Uh, just the fact of look how important like a legit like one C is. I mean, you look at like a team like you know m- you know my Nashville Predators. We have two legit two Cs, but we don't have a one C, and I think that holds us back along with our terrible power play and penalty kill. But that's not what this is about. But I think the thing is, is they have to hope Roslovic grows, and they have to hope that Line Eight isn't lazy. And even worse is Torts likes to have his team be defensive, which is even worse because Line Eight is like Phil Kessel is, uh, calling him a defensive liability is being nice. Yeah. It's- yeah. I mean, it could also work out for Line Eight where Torts bangs him into shape. Like, at I, the I, same, sh- I shouldn't have said that actually, but um, at, at the same I, time, that was the, us. That's us. <laughs> the same, I, I noticed the second I said it, it's going in the bin. 
at the same but, time, we have like line A, who you need to be line A and not be lazy. You have Roslovic, who needs to grow. And then, you know, for Winnipeg, they get, uh, they get, you know, Pierre Luc Dubois, who is a legit 1C. Well, I guess he'd be playing on the second line because of, uh, Shifley, but you have Dubois, who's already proven to be that gritty two way power forward that you need on your team. And, you know, they get the 2022 third round pick, which could be good. We, you know, we won't know yet. But I think Columbus is taking a giant risk with this trade, but it had to be made. Here's my thing with it um, I don't care what anyone says. People are going to say Dubois is, gonna be, is, is a great choice center. He plays under Tortorella, Tortorella, who's one of the... Honestly, you can hate on him as much as you want. He's one of the best defensive coaches in the NHL. And Dubois only had a 25% uh, even strength defense, according to Jay Fresh. And if you don't follow Jay Fresh, he's amazing. You should. Um, and even Rossovic, only 20% in Winnipeg under Paul Maurice, who, once again, is... a very good defensive shutdown coach. So it's not like all the three of these players are like great two-way players that can excel under the, their new head coaches. I don't think so. You can, I can realistically see everyone struggling because they don't fit, fit into the ski, into their uh, system. Well, I think a player like Laine, Laine is going to struggle even more. I mean, oh yeah, uh, like I talked about to you guys earlier, I think like if, if this is all torts, and my my hypothesis is that it is torts. If this is all John Tortorella, then I think the next player that's going to want out of Columbus is Alexander Texier. Really, mm. Texier? Oh, I, I, I I think Jones could be the next person. Honestly, it it's going to be one of the it's going to be someone. But I don't see Texier fit it, buying into torts to Tortorella's stuff as much as you know someone else would. Yeah. And it's obvious that Torts is really hard on his players, right? Um, well, it makes them better. It does. It, and that's okay, why it I, makes them better. As I said before, I've had football coaches and baseball coaches like this. While it does help you improve, improve it's not so much out of respect for the coach. It's out of, dis, it's out of disdain. When you perform well, you're not going to like them. Like a lot of my coaches, I hated. And I would play better because I hated them. I mean... If it's a prove you wrong kind of thing, yeah, for sure. But at the same time, it does, you know, Tortorella pushing his players really hard. Is that going to make, well, first of all, he's going to change because, you know, if Dubois left because of him. And second of all, um, is Line going to benefit from being pushed hard or is that going to just make him go back to what he did, was doing last season and the season uh, before? I... But that's the thing. These, nowadays, these young kids... Um, don't respond to uh, coaches like Torts very well, but I don't care. Like Tortorella's the head coach; he should push you as as hard as he can. I, I doubt Tortorella hates his players. Like, will he get pissed off at them? Will he yell at them? Will he swear at them? Of course, but it's gonna make the team better. It's gonna make you better. And you know what? You can hate him as much as you want, but. He's the coach. You have to have respect for the coach. Well, that's a th- that's a thing though. Is that kind of that kind of teaching? It does work to make players better and stuff, but it does get a lot of animosity in the locker room, not just towards the coach, but to players players alike. It does create tension. It, it that is it, for sure. Yeah, it creates a lot. Like let's say you know Corpusalo has a bad game, and Torts is yelling at him. Maybe other players think that it's Corpusalo's fault they lost the game. Well, I'm I'm in the belief that you never blame your goalie and until it's actually their fault. I mean, um, you can look at some of the depth players in Columbus. Like it's not a, it's not the deepest team, you know. But it's a coach like Torts. A coach like Torts is the reason why I have them third in the, in the division because they played a trap. Their games are going to be what majority of the time is three one two one two nothing whatever. Well, I mean, just look at the way they played against Nashville. I mean, yeah, you you know, the, there's the whole thing with du- Dubois not trying, and he basically let one of the goals get scored there. But Nashville absolutely just put them in their place, and I think that, and I think that it's just gonna be a lot riskier for uh, for Line A to get into Torts thing because I do not believe he'll buy into Torts' system at all. Right. Well. 
I mean, we saw it before where coaches have completely have been really bad people to their players. We saw it with Mitch Marner and Mike Babcock selling him out to his teammates. Um, and you know what? I am under the impression that's why Mitch Marner is being paid overpaid by like one point five million dollars, right? But at the same time, I don't think any of us expected Mitch Marner to end up end up being this good. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be a penalty killer, a defensive force. I mean, but... if you're just a top five, you're expected to be kind of elite in the mm-hmm. near future. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't think anyone expected him to be a penalty killer. Or I, it... kinda, I, don't know. I mean, he kind of did play the PK when he was in London a bit. Well, the thing is, there's um a lot of difference between playing in the OHL PK and in the NHL. And well, I mean, if, if, well, since he had the experience in the OHL, it would have been, it would not have been that shocking that they tried him in the NHL. You know. Yeah, I, but, I, I agree with that, but at the same time, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think it, he has been a really good penalty killer. First of all, and second of all, that, uh, that I think it's Bab a lot of up to Babcock that he is as good defensively as he is because I don't I didn't really didn't expect this out of him but I, I don't know I think I think the the type of coaching style that like Babcock or um you know Torts has it works for some players but some but other players it really like hinders them yeah like and, I think it hindered uh, someone like Austin Matthews who really didn't get as much time to play well, as someone like Jake Gardner or Nazem Kadri, they thrived under Babcock, right? So yeah, it all depends. And I, th- but also with like you know, kind of a lightning rod like John Tortorella. The thing is, is like, if players buy into it and it works, it's great. But the second one player doesn't buy into it, everything falls apart. Yeah, I mean, a team's only as strong as its weakest link. So yeah, it. So, what was it that we heard on John Tortorella? I don't know uh, exactly what the quote apparently was. Apparently, John Tortorella was looking to expose him the first day PLD showed up to training camp. See, like, if that really is what it is, that's not the type of coach that you want to be playing under. I don't care how good you are uh, or yeah, how I good the coach is. Like, Cor- Torts is obviously a great coach. He, Tur- yeah. Columbus is not... A great team, and he's propelling. It's not them. the most skilled team for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't. But at the same time, you can't have just a garbage person being the coach, and because like they're supposed to hold the team together, right? And the way if John if John Tortorella is be is going around insulting players or you know trying to sell them out at the first uh, the first day he got into camp, that's a bit of an issue. Well, yeah, but that's also one side of the story. Yeah, that is one side of the story. Uh, can it's, be, that can be easily fa- fabricated. Yeah, easily. Yeah. By the agent, by the player. Uh, I think the person who who reported it was... Um... Let me pull, pull it up. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I still go back to that point. Like, if it is true, that is a big problem. And I don't know how much longer Torts can last to the coach because... You know, if every if players see that okay, one guy's pissed off and now he's gone, then you might have then there's gonna be other players that start to step out and say, yeah, this guy's been a bit of a garbage person. So I don't, I'm not gonna like jump to the conclusion that it was him. But his teammates haven't. Well, I should say his ex teammates. His ex teammates haven't really backed up his claim yet. Yeah, but it was Keller, reported I know, I know by Pat Breeson. I know that they're still playing under Tortorella and that, you know, you don't want to come out while you're playing for your head coach. But, I mean, hell, I didn't hear anything about this from Panarin, who left because of a market. I didn't hear anything about this from Bobrovsky, Duchesne, Dezingle, um, Ryan Johansson. Actually, yeah, Ryan Johansson. No, Ryan, Ryan, no, no, no. Ryan Johansson wanted out because of Torts. I'm pretty was sure Tortorella, that was confirmed. Hold up. Let me just, when was Tortorella hired? He... Let me t- Fourteen. Hold up. So, so Ryan Johansson was traded. Ryan Johansson was traded on um, January 6, twenty sixteen. Yeah. So Torts was the coach since twenty fifteen. Yeah. He only played twenty games under Torts. At the same time, you it doesn't necessarily have to be during games. You realize that your coach is a, is 
is not very friendly. It's, you know, it's practices. It's, you know, it's just in like the locker room. It's everything. Well, towards, well, what if, well, once again, we don't know the full story. What if Johansson was, um, you know, just not taking sh- uh, stuff seriously? Like well, that's POV. the thing. That's, that's not the type of player Johansson is. Ah, I, well, I don't really know about much about Johansson, but. Oh, I've Ooh. been watching Joey like he's been since... struggling in Nashville, hasn't he? Well, that's the thing though is people want to say that Duchesne and Johansson have been struggling super bad, and then they're like, he only has zero goals so far this year. It's like neither of them are supposed to be goal scorers. You know, Duchesne, while he hasn't been putting up many points yet this year, he's been very good at drawing penalties, which kind of is null and void because Nashville sucks on the power play. But even then, Johansson has been excellent at, like, keeping the puck. Okay, but it is kind of besides the point, but, like... Yeah, it's besides the point. Yeah. I, you know, I can't, we can't say for sure, obviously, but this is Pat Brisson, this is his PLD's agent, and usually, I don't, uh, like, usually, um... I, I wouldn't s- say agents are right a lot of the time. Yeah, I wouldn't say. I mean, I, hell, remember that controversy back in the playoffs? Who was um, Yeah. Yeah, Alan Walsh and Mark Andre Fleury. Well, I mean, we could we could just we could speculate all day, but I would say the best thing to do is why do what what do you guys think is the reason PLD demanded I think a I, trade? I honestly, I honestly think it's a market. You know that that is my number one option that it is the market, but I think that that you have really big problems if it was Tortorella, because uh, no player no player should have to deal with playing under a piece of crap coach. So, I I think it's I I think it's Tortorella. You know, you look at what was it last year's playoffs in the bubble after after Dubois did something, Tortorella was just there screaming at him. I don't have a problem with screaming, like... Well, it was like... But the thing is, is, like... Some players, you know, that's fine for some players. Some players don't want to have to deal with that. Well, then there's always... And, of course, it's it's a public display, meaning that, you know, the other team can capitalize on that. Well, here's the thing. If it was just... Because I actually remember that back in the plane. So it was Game 3 versus Toronto. Or game two, it was one of the, it was either it was either game two or game three when that happened, but um, if it was just Dubois and the same things happening again, it, it's all it obviously means Torrella has something against Dubois, and it's for a good reason that we don't know about. There might be some off ice stuff that we don't know about. There might be some on ice stuff we don't know about. There might be stuff in the locker we don't know about. But if if it's consistently Pierre Luc Dubois, that obviously means he's doing something to piss off Torts. Well, no matter what the thing is, the lack of I I'm I fully believe that you should be for the team no matter what. Like you should never be for yourself unless like you're injured. Then you should be selfish and say, "Yeah, I can't play." Cuz you know, you should take injuries very seriously otherwise they could ruin your entire career. But the fact that Pierre-Luc Dubois wasn't even trying out there to show, like, it, it, I lost a lot of respect for him when he just wasn't yeah. trying. Like, yeah, I get it. You want out, but you should make, you, you should try a hundred and, you know, 250% every time you're out on the ice. And even then, like, if you're not playing well and you still haven't gotten traded, that's, that's lowering your value of Hunt and that may. And I think Kekalainen did a great job in getting value back. Oh, for especially sure. After that game. Especially yeah, I think he pulled game. off a miracle with that. Because I'm pretty. Because I remember reading somewhere where um, I think in Montreal was offering Cuck in the Emmy or something. I'm pretty sure the Duck sent an offer, but it didn't crew dries the other Zegra. So yeah, I mean, that's you, not you put that in speculation. That that's probably something like Raquel or Sam Steele or or whatever. Like, but the fact that he got an elite sniper and once again. I know he's not the great defense line A, but he's an elite sniper. And you get back a very good three C and a low tier second line center. That's a great. That's a great trade for Dubois. And it and it wasn't just Dubois, but like Roslovic demanding a trade. It's like yeah, you know, just just go out there and like you know prove yourself. That, like Roslovic's big problem was he wasn't getting enough ice time. 
Well, then go out there and prove that you deserve the ice time. Well, that's I mean, right now. I mean, right now you're not going to jump over Andrew Cobb because he's been on fire. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, but at the same time, you can you can play the lower lines and make it you know make it seem and then make it a point but, proven that you deserve to be higher. But the the thing is, he's been playing eight minutes of ice time with Trevor Lewis and Matthew Perot. Yeah, I don't blame him at all for leaving. Like we saw, I don't with... blame him for like, honestly. Yeah, like Friday, I can see a point because he still has stats to be with him on the second line, and even on the power play, he still has Kyle Connor. So. Um, but wasn't I, Roslovic getting power play or penalty kill time? Probably. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say penalty who's kill. Who's on a second one? A big power play. They won't. They won't be that good. Yeah, and also there's the fact that you no, know, we've seen it before where players that really should be getting playing time aren't getting playing time. We saw it with Josh Levo in Toronto. We see it with Daniel Sprong in Pittsburgh. These guys, well, I think. Kind of like a bust now because he hasn't really done anything with Washington or Anaheim. Is it, yeah, Yo, Sprung's yeah. in Washington. He, now. he is a bust, but like at the time, you know, he's a highly talented yeah, prospect. I yeah, I, I, I just don't, I, you know, I just don't like when when players do that. Like, you know, just playing at like two percent of what you could be. Well, at the same time, like with Roslov, I, I agree with the with Pierre Luc Dubois that he wasn't really playing hard enough, even though he really should have been. I don't uh, even think he was even playing like when he went into the corner against Tampa Bay and he just let them go by. Well, yeah, but uh, with Jack, Jack Roslovic, I think he's a good enough player that he should have been playing third line minutes at least. And he's getting, sh- uh, he, and he didn't have a contract. Right. So there's that part too. Um, so like he wanted to either be traded or get signed. And that was the only way he was going to play. And you know, I, I, I'd say that's pretty fair. If he wouldn't that. sign a contract. He, the, the big thing was he didn't like his minutes and well, he didn't like his role. Well, you know, I, I don't agree with Liney on the minutes take because he's still getting top six ice time and you're still on the power play, which honestly could be one of the best power plays in the game if they can actually get it down. But, but I really think Rostovic had a really good point. Yeah, I don't blame Rostovic. But at, I don't. Three points a year. Yeah, I in think the the only, he should the, be he should be in a top six above Paul Statsny. He the should. only person who didn't request a trade in this entire ordeal was Line. At the same time, Line was been has we, there's been I mean, Line kind of requested a trade. Yeah. That's been around not, for a while. I mean, that that's still kind of like eh. Line has been in trade just, rumors since like year one though. Year yeah, but two. we just all we know is that he was fed up in Winnipeg. Yeah, I and mean, there's also the fact that with uh, the Patrick Laine and was it Blake Wheeler and Palmer? Oh no, Mark Scheifele no, and Blake no, it Wheeler. Was, yeah, it was Blake Wheeler and Mark, Mark Scheifele who so, were like I, once again, putting I, sand in. I his don't. Once skates. I still don't think that's true. I don't like. I, I'm telling you, Blake Wheeler is one of the best captains in yeah, the NHL. He's no, one of the nicest people in the league. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, at the same time, that's stuff you see. Like I don't I, like once again. I I'm not it. gonna. I, I'm not gonna say I don't buy it or not because I really don't know. But at the same time, that's a hundred percent a good reason to want to leave because your captain yeah. and your is Shifley an assistant. I think he is. He, uh, he's but he's either an alternate captain. Yeah, or, I think he's in it. And even if he's not an alternate captain, he's, he's a leader. He's a line leader sure. line mate. Yeah, and he's a line and line is line mate, right? So that's a. Uh, Pretty good reason to want to leave if your teammates, especially your captain and your, uh, your line, line mate, mate or assistant or alternate captain, are what is it throwing sand at your skates or whatever? Putting sand in your skates and just hating you. I don't think it was literally putting sand in skates. That's a uh, yeah. it's a figure yeah, of speech. I don't I don't know, but it's like, a figure of speech. But I yeah, at the same a time, speech, but at the same time, I I don't. Like I don't like I said I don't know if it's true, but if it is, then that's also a really good reason to want to leave. So. If this yeah, is, we don't know if it's true. Yeah, we don't know if it's true. Exactly. Yeah, we don't. Finished article. Freeman has not confirmed this. Chris Johnson has not confirmed this. Pierre LeBron, Bob Kenzie, McKenzie. Yeah, like, but at the same this time, this is coming from a Hitler. This is coming from a Finnish website. Okay, but at the same time, like, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know that happens, like, like the whole like Bill Peters thing. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I like. Yeah, but like Bill Peters actually became the. Bill Peters, first of all, was brought out by an actual NHL player, and then it was confirmed by another NHL insider. This is just coming from a random Finnish website that no one has ever heard of before. Yeah, that's that's true. But I think the bit I think the big thing in this is 
all of these players are risky right now. Oh yeah, of course. Lion A is in nice terms a defensive liability, which I don't know will that work with Columbus. Roslovic needs to grow and Dubois needs to prove that, you know, his defensive ability wasn't just because of torts and he also needs to prove that he's you know, capable he's, of trying. Yeah, he's actually gonna try. He needs to actually try. And if I know he, what, I don't think Rosovic is risky at all, really, because what is it, thirty points to forty point uh, player, and he's playing in the bottom six. I think that they ran away bit. with that part. Like, and he, here's another thing: if Dubois' first game with Winnipeg, if he even shows even a modicum of not trying, then then he's immediately gonna get hammered down upon by everybody. I mean, and it's fair because like he's coming. Yeah, to a it's new fair, team and but he's not he, trying. Uh, just just to an ad here. Um, Winnipeg just tweeted us out. It's a, it's a Patrick Laine trippy video, and man, it's actually it's actually pretty heartwarming. It's actually kind of sad. I'm not even a Jets fan, to making me tear up. Well, the Jets fans, they didn't. Jets fans are great. I love I love them. Yeah, and like you know they they had Patrick Laine, and you know it, I think at that time there was no doubt. Well, we look at the time there was doubt, but really. Was there any? Austin Matthews was the first overall pick. They didn't manage to get him. Um, but then this guy came in, and he was amazing first year, right? Um, yeah. Obviously not as good as Matthews. Second year, he was absolutely I mean, there was amazing. still the Matthews debate. Well, There's yeah, still there was still Matthews. a debate. But I'm, like, I'm going to be honest here. I Even at that time, I was like, line A is better. But, of course, I mean, that's changed. Yeah, but this guy was their star. He was supposed to be their yeah. star. And... They treated him well. They really did. They loved him, and it's they were definitely. Line sad really didn't even do anything in return. He just turned into laziness. Um, in the beginning, he was definitely trying. Um, yeah, but then all of a sudden, he was just like, well, "Yeah, I'm not I, gonna you play." Know, let me find out his uh, uh, player card from 2016, 17, so I can confirm it. But uh, yeah, I was actually just looking at that. Let me get it for you, Shay. Uh. I mean, we were kind of looking at that during the over under video, but yeah. My note from it though. Yeah, I mean, the th- I I I don't know. My big thing is like, I I guess Roslovic is the only not risk here, but at the same time, Pierre Luc Dubois and Patrick Laine are two big like question marks. Yeah. At the, for sure, and uh, just looking at it right now, his isolated goals for was above. 80% his isolated expected goals for was also it was it was barely 10% and he smashed that and his expected goals against has always been kind of garbage so but like I, I guess that was a thing with Patrick Lane you never expected him to be good at defense and but uh, he, he 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 came just as advertised he can score he is a power play specialist um and he did drop off, but at the same the, time, yeah. The big, the big thing is, is, is he gonna start trying again? Just like I the think PLD. He will. I think I the kick's gonna make him try. I don't think he'll fit into um, Toro system, but I, 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 I can see him really rebounding in Columbus, especially if he can play with an actual first line center. Maybe John Luke Foody in a couple years. He has all for Bjorkstrand there. He has Cam Atkinson. There's still some decent players in Columbus. Well, on on that, where do you guys think he's gonna like? Who do you think is line like with PLD Jack Roslovic and Line A? Where do you guys think they're gonna play? Like what line and who well, do you guys think their line mates are gonna be? Who's your first line center right now? Well, that's my question. Oh, that's not this. Not a good. Can, you, can you even name three centers on that team? I can only name uh, two. Tex- is, and and uh, Booty. I mean, Boone Jenner is not really a center. I think Texi. I think Boone Jenner is playing center right now, but I can't. I, guess, I would not, I would not play him center whatsoever. Koivu? They're playing. They're playing Koivu. Max Domi as center. And oh, that's Max. Okay, Max. Max, 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 Max that doesn't work. That does not work. So Max Domi one C with Line A. And line A and Bjorkstrand. There you go. Bjorkstrand. Hey, it's not that's horrible. A, that's not bad. It's not a bad first line, but you shouldn't have Domi as the first line center. He's better. Well, Roslovic could play second line center with like. Uh, Rosovic is so Jenner and Atkinson right now. That's not bad either. That's actually a pretty decent third line. Maybe yeah. play Texie at the wing for a while. Uh, uh, Texie's got to play center. They have to play center. Oh, true. I'm true. just saying right now they're really mismanaging Domi. 
If he was a winger, I think he'd do so much better. Oh, for sure. Uh, there's no question. But at the about same that. time, they don't have anybody. To they take don't have a mantle. Yeah, yeah, it's. Sure. They have to play Domi at center because they don't have anyone else. Yeah, so yeah, I guess too. line A, Roslovic, Roslovic, what do you say? Third line center, is she? Yeah. And Roslovic's I'd first line right wing, as he should I'd be. I'd say put Roslovic at second line center. Put hmm. Ros. You know what? They have a second line of Nyquist, Roslovic, and Domi. Like, that'd be actually pretty dangerous. Yeah, but then first line center is. Texier. Ah, you know what? That's not that bad either. I, yeah, yeah that's not that bad. Shot. Yeah, yeah give Texier a shot. If he flops, send him down to the third line. Yeah, if you're in line, that's a solid top six. Yeah, I mean, Texier's been really good, so I guess you could give him a chance for sure. Yeah, but if Tex- yeah, and then if Texier just doesn't produce on the first line, just put him down to the third line. Yeah, so that yeah, doesn't look cool. bad at all. To, I'm not going to lie it, at all. All right, and now is, gonna, is PLD going to get first or second oh, center? I second center. Or- Second easily. Yeah, but... I, I for Winnipeg, I think what they should do is go Wheeler, Shifley, Kyle Connor, Corsair, or Nikolai Ehlers. I, I really, th- I actually, I've always been a fan of Nikolai Ehlers. I think he's been undershadowed there a bit, and I think if he if he can put up better numbers than Kyle Connor in that first line, and on your second line, you can have Andrew Kopp, who who's once again off to an amazing start. Pierre Luc Dubois and Kyle Connor. Their third line would be. I uh, think Ehlers was my was my underrated for Winnipeg. I think I had him too. Yeah, or sorry for the interruption, but like I I just remembered that. Yeah, Ehlers is damn good. But Didn't... I think I th- I think Dubois, Ehlers, and mm, maybe like who could play very well on that on that second line right wing that could work that could be deadly with those two. I don't know yeah. Wheeler. Then the third line, you have Statsny, Lowry, and whoever you want on that third third right wing spot. Like yeah, so their defense, their sorry, their center depth is obviously so good, really? right? Yeah, yeah they, they got... their center depth. I think the thing is, is Winnipeg took their already good center depth and made it even better, and then Columbus took their struggling center depth and made it even worse but they did add to their wings which look really good but and they also... added to their wings but then they just ruined their center depth i i'm gonna go on a limb and say i feel like they're gonna trade one of their wingers for a center now nah, they I... really, they really need which one. which winger though well bjorkshan's untouchable they just got lining he's not going anywhere like Chris... Atkins, no one they're not gonna trade access i have a atkinson basically a blue jacket for life um... felina's probably staying they could Maybe they can ship off Nyquist. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Nyquist, but who, what would be in return? You couldn't get that much. Uh, you're you not going to get that like much unless you throw in some picks. a pretty decent third-line center out of Gustav Nyquist, who's been struggling there. Yeah. But compare if you compare uh, Winnipeg's three centers, or you could even say four, there's, there's just overall center depth to the rest of the league. What, are they up there with Toronto with Matthews, Tavares, Kerfoot? A bunch of other wingers that are able to play center. Um, uh, obviously Edmonton with two top ten, top fifteen, whatever you think it is, players in the league that are their two centers. Um, Crosby, Malkin, Malkin struggling. Obviously, it's up there for sure. Yeah. But, yeah, I'd say I'd say Winnipeg's big big issue now is uh defense. Is definitely defense as, yeah. as always. The, they yeah, got, they they have. Obviously, I don't think. They're- I don't think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I think with the structure Paul Maurice has, their defense is actually a bit underrated. It's still it's still not great, but I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. Josh Morris, he's a good defenseman. Oh, no, I'm not Morris. saying it's I'm not saying it's bad at all. I'm just saying it's what they're lacking. Well, yeah, I mean they it's... can't have uh, Connor Hellebuck, who's been struggling a little bit this year. Um, you know, play in front of a lot of third pairing defensemen. You know, you can't have that happen. Yeah, like Morrissey's been, he's been decent. Pionk's been pretty good. Um, but after that, kind of drops off. But like, like you said, their defensive system is solid, so that could always compensate. And if Hellebuck gets back into form, that's the best goalie in the league right there. So, yeah, it, it they are definitely. Like, coming into the season, I didn't think they'd even be making the playoffs. Now I'm a bit higher on them. No, you should... I, I, 
I'll I can say this as a as a Predators fan. We play Winnipeg all the time, and Winnipeg's big thing is they never look scary on paper, but they're scary. I I would say that they look scary on paper, if you ask me. It's like it's like Dallas this year. Did anybody expect them to blow out like Nashville and and all the teams they have so far? I mean, Nashville's PK is pretty bad. So, and you I mean, our PK is the worst. Same with their power. Same with their power play. But like at the There's same just time, on Nashville. Like I mean, wasn't it in 2019 when you guys went over 16 on the power play in the playoffs? Yeah. And you still didn't fire your power play coach? Uh, <laughs> uh, we fired Laviolette, yeah, and our two assistants. And still has it gotten better? That's wow. We brought in uh, Hines. We brought in Hines, and then the two assistants were Dan Hanote and uh, Todd Richardson, the guy from or no Todd Richards, the guy from Tampa Columbia. Bay. No Tampa Bay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he also used to coach Columbus. I oh, okay, but I think the big thing is, like, I don't know if it's just, like, starting out just a bit bad, but I will say this. Heinz, his his line management is awful. Oh, yeah, Matt. <laughs> we know Matt, who, who, Matt who, who, yeah, no, I agreed with Matt all, all this time, but I was like, you know what? Nashville is solid. Heinz literally just has to look at what LaViolette was doing last year and keep it that way, but then let, let his assistants help the power play and penalty kill. What does Heinz do instead? He gives Yossi less ice time. What? Why? Yeah, you can't what give Yossi less, less ice time. Who looks at Roman Yossi and is like, let's just not play him? What are some lines that Laviolette had that Heinz change? Um... Well, he didn't really just... He didn't really change, like, many lines, I guess. Like, the biggest line changes that came... Came with like the obvious new players, right? Yeah. It's not so much the line, you know, spread out. Like I wish he would. I wish he would, you know, put Duchesne on first line power play with, with Johansson, Arvidsson, and what is it? Just how much he plays and, them? And Forsberg. It's yeah. time allocation. Okay. Yeah. It's time allocation. He's giving. He's giving everybody who who should get more time less time. Yeah, I know how you feel because Austin like Matthews the, is not even like playing twenty minutes before. The worst part of it was when was the first game we played against was the first or second game we played against Chicago, where he started our fourth line first, and I had a brain aneurysm. Like, why? Well, I don't. I'm not opposed to starting the first a fourth line first ever because it's you know you have I, I don't know if. Nashville's fourth line that well, but it's defensive it's, forward. Right? It's Richardson. It it's Richardson, uh, Cole Smith, and Matthew Oliver. But Cole Smith will frequently be changed out for. Um, I'm I'm dr- it, it was Cole Smith, I think, but it could it. I think it flip flops sometimes with um. Uh, drawing a blank, but the fact he's not playing Rocco Grimaldi is really upsetting me. Okay, Grimaldi had a great year last year. Yeah, Grimaldi has Grimaldi, or or had one goal, you know, so far this year. Grimaldi should be playing. Like, yeah, Yarn croaks out with an injury, but Grimaldi should be playing, and I don't know why he's not getting ice time. Well, he had three one points in sixty six games last year. Yeah, but like, it, and, it's, and this is someone that that before that year has been. A career A cheller. Yeah, he definitely had a resurgence. I will not. I, I think know. that has to do with his size, to be honest. Like, so many people pass up on oh, people because yeah. they're smaller. I mean, yeah, you just look at Yamamoto. He fell to 22nd. He's like 5'8". I mean, look at Martin St. Louis. He wasn't even drafted. Oh, he was like, he was like 5'8", and he big, he's one of the best Tampa Bay Lightning players to ever play. Yeah, we see it all yeah. the time What a, with Robertson, Yamamoto. Yeah, that's not even why. Like, I don't even like you know when a lot of people talk about oh he's small he shouldn't be playing. I'm just like that. That doesn't matter because in my opinion, when it comes to hockey, we've been proven too many times that your height and weight don't really matter. Right. Especially yeah, I, with how speed based this is. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I, you can actually make the argument that you should be reluctant to draft taller guys now in the draft because how much the game has changed. Yeah, I mean even even so you could like I'm I'm guessing someone could say like well being tall with goalie still matters. Look at UC Saros. He's 5'11". Five five yeah, yeah. I, and he's and you know he's he's, he's going to be good. 
He's like, already one of the best goalies right now. Yeah. I if you like wouldn't look uh, like size obviously it pays it plays a factor with goalie but it usually just changes their style like someone like Jacob Markstrom or Miko Koskinen you can see that they may be out of position a lot but they they may not be the most athletic goalies but they are I able mean, to Marshall cover. Pretty athletic okay, for size. So yeah, Markstrom for sure. But like just like they are able to just cover a lot of the net and that's how they play their game. <laughs> Not yeah, good. well, like Saros, you know, I watch him all the time. He, well, he doesn't have the size. He makes up for it very well because he somehow is able to play very low, but at the same time play very high. Um, I one one guy that I look at is Mark Andre Fleur. He's only six foot one, right? Um, he is also out of position a lot, but he oh, is yeah. so athletic, right? And yeah. that's how he makes his saves. Or, but then there's also other goalies that are really focused on positioning, even though they're not that big. And that's how they that's, cover their angles, right? Speaking of Fleury, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as a, as an example. And I'm not comparing him to Marc Andre Fleury because Fleury's like a million times better than this guy. I think you're better than this guy. I'm, I'm about I'm about to bring up Quarrel, but Mike Smith. <laughs> he, he is never in position. He relies on his on his speed. And, and his athleticism. I hate on Smith and, as much as I want. I hate Smith too, but he is actually really athletic. But that's the thing. It can harden your team. If you're not in position, yeah, that, and you're not fast I mean, enough. That's not I, going in. I would say this. A goalie who, you know, going off of Mike Smith being out of position a lot, there's a difference. Mike Smith sometimes can't recover when he's out of position. Look at a guy like Pekka Rene. Remember that one time he went to go play behind the behind the boards? It had a weird bounce, and it was going right for the net, and he did, like, a flip to make the save. Was it the Chicago game series? It was, no, it was, no, no, no. This was, like, last year. Last oh. year, the year before. Well, at the same he, time, Pekka Rene's big. He's, what, 6'6", six, 6'5"? Six, well, six, five? Five, five. He's 6'5", five, but at the same time, he's super athletic. Yeah. Not even, not even just for someone his like his size and age. He's just athletic. Yeah, that's true. But all right. Yeah, I I don't really. We're just going off on tangents right now. But yeah, I mean, it has been a while since we you know actually made like a just a talk episode that we were just talking. How did how did PLD go into Pecorine? Because <laughs> uh, we started talking about goal like size. Oh yeah. Was it size? I don't even remember, man. Uh, all right, yeah. So I just ended. Uh, the, uh, I just ended our recording, Tundra, but no, uh, we're back. We got breaking news. Yeah, we're Shay. back because we got breaking news. Shay, all right. Cast. All right. So, Sportsnet just tweeted this. It was, and let me just see who it was written by. It was written by Sean McKenzie. Oh, did you okay. did you know Joe Thornton once re- re- renovated the Sharks' bathroom stalls? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Guys, guys, did you see this? There's just more breaking news. Oh. <laughs> Nate Schmidt bought Sutter a McFlurry. No oh. way! And I hear no it was way. Oreo flavored. Oh my god. Oh my. That's wow. crazy. Dude. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, so thank you everyone for listening to another episode of the Tundra Cast. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs>